What's up guys? I'm just a gamer and I'm back with a reaction video. Uh, THQ Nordic had a special spotlight uh, video for their upcoming Alone in the Dark remake. <clears throat> now we haven't heard anything about this for a good long while and I'm actually really excited to see what they show here because I've never really been into the Alone in the Dark series. I never played any of the original games and I remember the god awful attempt at a reboot a while back that was just so so bad. So yeah, I'm really curious to see what this game's gonna be like now. And yeah, enough of me talking. Let's get into it. Oh, they even give us a release date. Last night I dreamt that my uncle hung himself in the attic, that we were too late. Oh! The house looked different, but it was still called Dorsetto. Oh! It's a weird place. Feels like I've been here before, I just can't think why. Let's not waste any time, Detective. Yeah, you're right. Let's go get your uncle, Miss Hartwood. These two big, big time into the dark actors. Into the night. I mean, it's always trying to create a mystery, right? It's something that's more than just jump scares. A bit of fighting, demanding puzzles, and a lot of atmosphere. It maintained some of that weirdness of the old games, but it had like an updated slickness to it that I liked as well. You haven't seen a little girl by any chance, have you? I don't think so. Uh, you would have known if you did. We start our story much like the original. Jeremy Hartwood is haunted by the Dark Man, and he goes to a countryside hospital called Dracetto in hope to find some help. I need to get this letter to my niece. She would understand. Jeremy sends a disturbing letter to Emily Hartwood, his niece, and it spooks her enough that she hires Detective Edward Carnby to find out what's going on. Who are you? Whoa, pardon me, excuse me. My name is Edward Carnby, private investigator. I hope you don't mind we let ourselves inside. I do mind. We knew early on that we had a character-driven story, so we needed to find some really good actors to uh, make those characters come to life. I knew of past iterations of the game. I mean, the video game world is something that I'm very interested in in general, the horror game genre specifically. David has a really strong presence as an actor, and he's able to make the funny moments really funny, but also the dramatic parts really intense. Why the hell do I wake up hearing that damn voice? I know what it sounds like. It's not what you think. He's kind of a gruff detective, and he's like searching for something, and you know, he's uh, he's hard boiled, but he's got some humor to him and stuff like that. He's a bit of a um, trope or a type, and I like that, and I like the world and sort of where, how he's exploring this insanity um, amidst all this horror and stuff. I like all those aspects. Uh, let me know if you find her. I'll be around. Emily Hartwood has a closer connection to the plot, as she's Jeremy's niece. Nifra also suffers this strange affliction known as the Hartwood Curse. I love the mystery of the game. Um, I love the picture of her. Like, there was so much about it that I was curious of. There's a lot of fear within her and a lot of speculation and curiosity and, um, I guess, dread, intrigue. Like, there's a, there's a lot about her that is... Um, kind of on edge 10 years now more even since he died he died a hero Jodie's a fantastic actress and she brings a lot of nuance to Emily as a character and it really makes us sympathize with her 
Who's in here? Show yourself. Yes, there is the, the kind of scary element, but then she still has to go on a journey and discover different things, and there should still be room to breathe and have a funny moment or a sarcastic moment or a moment of discovery. Um, so it's just trying to really kind of keep all those other beats alive amongst the um, the kind of darkness of it all, I guess, is how I felt anyway. I'm digging the whole... It's like bringing back both classic gumshoe vibe of the game. And the, depending on who you play, you will get a different take on the same story. The people that are said it will react differently to you depending on who you play. Even the story will be slightly different. What are you doing sneaking around? So you should definitely make sure to play the game twice. What are you doing in my kitchen? The way that we reimagined the game was basically looking at the original, and it feels like we've been cultivating a seed that was planted 30 years ago, and it has now grown into something even more dark, even more sinister. I remember that the first Alone in the Dark I made in 1992, we were basically doing something that ah, we yes. really had done before. It was the first time that we could explore a big mansion, fight monsters, and solve difficult puzzles all in real time 3D. At the core is a haunted mansion. That's the most important part. It's Dercetto, I would say. It's a feeling that you're trapped inside. Uh, kind of small space. Yeah, I used to say back in the old days that it was another character. Yeah, for sure. With all the remakes going on today, you are never sure what you get at the end. I think that uh, Michael and the team at Pieces did a great job preserving the core feeling of the game. They even went further than everything I could expect 30 years ago. It's really an honor to sort of be a part of, of the franchise in that sense, because it is such a... Again, I, it can't be overstated. It's so special. It was such a new experience. As a fan of the original, I wanted to bring as much as I could into our version. And uh, they might have a slightly different meaning and different uh, reasons to be there, but if you know the old games, you will find a ton of references. Do I know you from somewhere? I remember you, Mr. Condy. I feel the franchise is in good hands now, and I can't wait to play the full game. To give you a taste of what the full game will be, we also created a prologue, and it features a character from the game called Grace Saunders, who is a little girl, and you play as her walking around your setto and trying to post the letter. The prologue is the first glimpse into the atmosphere and the mood, and of course the story of the full game. So uh, if you want to have a look, go and download it right now. Oh, sweet! Oh, that's gonna be... Our combat is intense and tough, and you will need to use every bullet you can find. And if you run out of bullets... I'm out of bullets! We might need to get in close and hit them with a melee weapon. Or if you're lucky, you can find something to throw. As mentioned before, your job is to find out what happened to Jeremy Hartford. And to do that, you will need to visit some unexpected places. And to get to those places, you'll need to find clues and solve some interesting puzzles. Depending how much you feel like a detective yourself, you can choose how much you want the game to help you find clues and where to go next. So the biggest um, creative focus for me as uh, for a long time been to reach something beyond the mundane, something spiritual. Mike, the director and I, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out what direction, musical direction we wanted to take with this project. And when we finally decided to go 
for this kind of dark voodoo jazz direction. Our lines uh, went directly to Jason, who is uh, a master in this uh, genre. It's a very visual uh, genre of music. The fact that it's inspired from noir films or noir detectives is already a good explanation of why this music fits very well for um, Alone in the Dark. There's a, a huge mountain and, and volcano of, of reverb with drums and screaming saxophone. <laughs> this explosion of, of the hair rising uh, horror and, and uh, big chaos. Again, I just love the vibe, as man. As drawn deeper into the game world, they will face off with the sinister presence known as the Dark Man. The Dark Man isn't real, Jeremy. There is nothing he can do to hurt you. How do you think any of this is happening? How do you still not trust my words? Fine. Then let me help. I promise. He will bury you next to me in his sunken temple for an eternity. Real or not, something is definitely corrupting the mind of Jeremy Hartley. Something very, very dangerous. Wow. I dug. I dig everything about this so much. All right, guys, that was the Alone in the Dark Spotlight. And yeah, again, I, I dig everything about what I just saw there. The very gumshoe noir feel of the game, the vibe. Um, both those actors, uh, Connie and David Harbour, like, I really really like them both i think they're both amazing and i think they're gonna do a great job here and yeah again like i don't really have much experience with the originals i, I vaguely i the most the one i remember the most is that very very bad attempt at a reboot back a long while time ago so i'm really happy to see this being way much closer to like the original in the sense of spirit and yeah again just everything about this just pulled me in like the music the game direction obviously there were the little during the gameplay segment there, i noticed a tiny bit of jank but nothing too bad and yeah i just honestly can't wait to get my hands on this i'll definitely probably be checking this out so yeah those are my thoughts that's my reaction if you enjoyed this video please leave a like or comment down below i'd appreciate any known feedback subscribe i'm streaming on twitch so please consider following me there at twitch tv slash just the gamer inc all together in a word or you can click the link below but yeah thanks for watching and until next time take care and have a good game